Good evening and thank you for joining us on Krem 2 News First at 4. I'm Mark Hanrahan standing alongside Thomas Patrick. Tom Sherry is off today. Thomas, you said there was a chance we'd see snow today and we did see some flurries here in Spokane and we had some gorgeous shots from Rice, Washington, if we can see them, as well as Priest River, Idaho this morning. So nothing accumulated here in Spokane, but a much different story, Thomas, up in the mountain passes. Yeah, mostly in North Idaho. They definitely got the uh, strongest snowfall overall. As for Spokane, uh, nice to see a lot of our viewers reporting in what they were seeing. Just a little bit of flurries at first, and then it switched over to rain for the afternoon. Sure. So no snow in Spokane, but still snowing uh, probably up in some of the mountains, or at least some of that residual moisture has already turned into fog. As you see up at Silver Mountain, definitely a bit of a spooky scene out there, if you will, even though it is November, of course. As for the mountain passes, here is Lookout Pass. You can see the roads are plenty wet, the snow on the side of the mountain, but with the traffic moving along, it usually warms up the roads just a little bit. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, take it extra cautious in case you run into any icy spots, especially on bridges and overpasses. But the snow is pretty much finished for the day and the rain for that matter. Nothing going on for the inland northwest. It's way over on this side of the screen over into Montana and central Idaho is where that storm system has pushed off to. A little bit of clearing trying to happen right now, but the foggy conditions are probably going to stick with us for a while longer and uh, temperatures will stay at least a little bit cool for tonight, but this is not the trend for this upcoming week. I got warmer days ahead and even more rain later on in the forecast. So we'll time out what will happen all the way heading into the weekend. All coming up in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. And early winter weather is plunging much of the country into dangerous cold with more than 220 million Americans facing sub zero temperatures over the next 24 to 48 hours. Flurries fell as far south as Nashville. Areas like southern Michigan were a complete whiteout and conditions also led to numerous accidents yesterday from New York to Missouri to Illinois. In Chicago, an icy runway sent a plane skating off course at O'Hare Airport yesterday morning. One Chicago resident says the cold is unprecedented. I've been here 60 years. I've never experienced winter coming so early. By Thursday, more than 222 million Americans in about 75% of the country will shiver in temperatures below freezing. This week, more than 300 cold weather records could be shattered from the central plains to New England and as far south as Florida. Pullman police are investigating a death at Washington State University at a fraternity there, and they say it could be alcohol related. The investigation is taking place at the Alpha Tau Omega House. Investigators say the 19 year old fraternity member was found unconscious and not breathing this morning. The Whitman County coroner will determine the official manner and cause of death. The Whitman County Sheriff's Office, meantime, and the Office of Dean of Students at WSU also responded to offer students support and counseling today. We do have a crew in Pullman right now gathering more information. We'll have a live report from campus coming up in our 5 o'clock newscast. 14 fraternities are suspended this afternoon at San Diego State University. This after a student died last week after attending a fraternity event. The details of what happened remain unclear. Authorities say the student went to the hospital Thursday and died a day later. The university opened an investigation that same day. Well, another semi truck got stuck underneath the Stephen Street Bridge today. This happened even after the city installed sensors and lights warning drivers of the bridge's height requirements. Grem 2 Shana Waltower joins us now with more on just how damaging these incidents are. Shana? All right, Shana Walter having an issue with her live report, though, so we will move on. A search is underway for a missing plane in northeast Washington. WashDOT leaders say the pilot left yesterday from Colville Municipal Airport. They say the pilot was on an hour long flight but never returned. Crews attempted two aerial searches but had no luck locating the plane. They say the pilot was the sole occupant. Investigators say they have not recorded any emergency beacon or distress signals in that area. You can read more about this search right now on our website. Just head to Krem.com. The bluest skies you've ever seen are in Seattle. Well, thousands of Seattle Sounders fans lined downtown Seattle streets today for a parade, cheering on players and celebrating the team's MLS Cup victory. Not all Sounders were at the festivities, though. 11 players were absent because they were traveling for international duty. The parade was followed by a championship rally on the Seattle Center. This is Seattle's second MLS Cup win in franchise history. Both victories 
have been over Toronto. Congratulations to them. Former President Jimmy Carter was under observation at a hospital in Atlanta following brain surgery this morning. It's the latest in a series of health scares for the oldest living president who turned 95 years old last month. The Carter Center says the procedure was to relieve pressure from bleeding on his brain. A spokesperson says there were compl no complications rather from the surgery, which was necessary after Mr. Carter fell several times recently. We will continue to update you on President Carter's condition. And as always, you can head to crim.com for more information. The recovery is going to depend on the person's symptoms beforehand, their overall health. But as we've seen with President Carter, he's incredibly resilient and strong. And if anyone can speed through their recovery for this, it'll be him. In 2015, Carter went through treatment in Atlanta for cancer in his liver and brain. He said months later, an MRI scan showed his cancer was gone. Immigration advocates and so-called dreamers descended on the U.S. Supreme Court today for arguments over the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, also known as DACA. Without DACA, about 700,000 young undocumented immigrants risk deportation. The Obama administration created DACA to protect young people brought to the U.S. illegally as children from deportation. The program also allows them to obtain work permits. The Trump administration ordered an end to the program, saying it was created illegally. Former Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano, who oversaw DACA, disagrees. I'm hoping that with all the amicus briefs that were also filed, that they read those thoroughly and, you know, see our stories. President Trump tweeted today that some DACA recipients are, quote, far from angels and that a deal would be made with congressional Democrats to allow recipients to stay if the court overturns the lower court's ruling. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus, meantime, they say the White House does not have a good track record for discussing immigration. The Supreme Court is also allowing a lawsuit to move forward against gun manufacturer Remington Firearms. It is the maker of the rifle used in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. The gunman in that attack killed 20 first graders and six educators. A survivor and relatives of victims argue the gun maker should be held responsible. The lawsuit claims the company should never have sold the dangerous weapon. It also argued the company targeted young at-risk males with marketing. The company argues it should be protected by law, shielding gun manufacturers if its product is used in a crime.